So you get to your campsite, you go to turn on a faucet, and you have nothing. No water pressure. What's going on? Well, I'm Ian Baker, and I'm going to give you some troubleshooting tips to hopefully get your water flowing. The first thing you have to determine is how water is getting into your RV. Do you have a city water connection at the campsite, or did you fill the fresh tank in the RV and get water through that in your water pump? I'm going to start with the city water option. So assuming you get to the campsite, you hooked up your water, everything's good, it'll probably look something like this. Now what you want to do is make sure that you have it in the correct inlet. A lot of your newer RVs will be labeled as such, so you can see city water connection. And if your city water is by your fresh tank fill, they usually look pretty different, so it's not too terribly hard to determine which is which, even if it is not labeled. However, where it becomes tricky is if you have a black tank flush. As you can see, these inlets are identical. So without the stickers, it can be pretty tough. So again, you want to make sure it's actually going in the fresh water inlet and not in the black tank flush. Assuming that is good, you know that the water is getting into the RV, theoretically, but is it? Is it coming out of the post? Is it coming out of the spigot? That's the next thing we want to check. So before we do that, <coughs> excuse me, I do just want to hit on a couple quick things on the setup I have here. Uh, first one is going to be a pressure regulator. Folks, I cannot stress enough how important this is. All of the water at campsites is completely unregulated because they just want to get water to all the campsites. So you can get pressures that are just way too high. It can damage hoses. It can damage your fittings inside, cause leaks. Nothing that you want to deal with. So definitely get a pressure regulator. Super cheap. Highly, highly, highly recommend. I'd also pick up an inline water filter or some kind of water filtration system. You never know what kind of water you're getting at the campsite. Again, it's just something that's good to have. And a portable water hose. You want to make sure you have a drinking water safe hose. You don't just want to use, you know, the green garden hose that I grew up with that I drank out of all the time. Uh, but not only is it unhealthy, but it also tastes bad, right? The water coming through, you don't want that. Get yourself a, uh, a good hose. But uh, back to the troubleshooting. So what you want to make sure is that you actually have water coming out of here. You want to make sure it is on and simple and easy enough to do that, right? What I recommend is turning it off if you do have it on, unscrewing your connection here, then turning it on just to make sure water is flowing. Uh, I've seen it a couple times where, you know, just that particular spigot is broken. It's a dry spigot. Nothing's coming out. You want to make sure water is good. But what this does is this ensures that we have water coming out of the spigot, going through our hose into the RV. So if you're running on city water, that is happening, and for some reason you still don't have water pressure, the next thing you're going to want to check is your low point drains. Again, on a newer RV, they're generally pretty easy to identify because a lot of times they will put a sticker so you know where they're at. Otherwise, you can just get down underneath your RV and look for something like this. It'll almost always have your PEX lines, both your hot and cold right there. You will see these ones are closed, but this one's open. And if your low point drains are open, well, your system's going to be draining right out the bottom and it's going to kill your water pressure. So you want to make sure those are closed. So you might be saying, Ian, that's great and all, but uh, where I camp, I don't have city water, right? I fill up my fresh tank. I go out to places where most people don't go. No big deal. So let's walk through some of the troubleshooting steps there. Come on in. And, <laughs> Ian, why are we in the bathroom? Well, because a lot of times, folks, when you have a travel trailer, that is where you'll find your tank monitoring panel. We're going to do a little bit of work on this guy. So the first thing you're going to want to check if you filled up your fresh tank and you don't have water pressure is to make sure there is water in the fresh tank. You'll see this one does not. And I know that sounds funny, but what can happen is you can have your fresh tank valve open for the last time you drained it, forgot to close it. And then when you filled it up, you know, the pressure going in was obviously higher than that going out. So it technically probably filled up and then drained out on your way to your destination. So hopefully you have water nearby. You can just fill that up super quick and easy fix. Let's say you have water in the fresh tank. Next thing you want to make sure is that your water pump is on. If you're pulling water from your fresh tank, you have to be able to get it there. You have to build up pressure because it's not city water. So you have to turn your water pump on. You'll see it's a little light right like that. Now, if you turn it on and there's no light, well, then you want to check your fuse panel and make sure that there's not a red light on there saying you have a blown fuse. Or if yours doesn't have red lights, you want to check the fuse, make sure that fuse is not blown. If all that is still good, um, the next step will be to check the battery, right? Turn on your water pump, boom, lights up, good to go, but the water pump's not turning on, which you should be able to hear it. Well, then you want to check your battery. You'll see this one is pretty good, right? I'm still at a third, but if it starts to get too low, right? Starts to get too low below those 12 volts, a lot of your systems just won't function. And 
your water pump is right along with that, right? So if it starts getting too low, your water pump's not gonna turn on, it's not going to give you water pressure. If the battery's good, you're still having issues, well then, what you'll wanna check is if your RV is equipped with what is called a, generally a winterization kit or winterization valve. And essentially what that is, is it's a little valve they install um, uh, next to your water pump. So instead of having your water pump draw water from your water tank, they have a separate little hose that you can stick in antifreeze to be able to pull all that antifreeze through your RV system. Super convenient until you forget to turn that valve back. And so what happens is that your water pump is still pumping through that hose where there's nothing, so it's just pumping air into your system even though you have a full fresh water tank. And folks, if you go through all these steps and you're still having issues, well, then it's probably gonna be something that may be a little bit too complex or require a little bit more work. And so that's when I recommend calling the Good Sam Elite Service Team so they can walk you through any other or any additional troubleshooting steps that may require a little more work or if they're unable to help you over the phone, get you to the nearest service center so we can get you fixed back on the road and get your water flowing. Hopefully these tips were able to solve your problem and if you liked what you saw here, make sure you click that subscribe button to see more how-to and troubleshooting tips.